Hi there, I'm Ms. Artastic, and in this episode, I'm gonna be diving in on how to teach art to kids. I'm so excited for this episode. So we're gonna dive in on four different strategies for teaching art to kids. Let's make some art. is through theme-based art. So you're gonna come up with a theme to create around. Um, whether it is, um, well, first of all, it should kind of be related to student interests or um, just something that is a little bit broad enough that it gives them a lot of creative freedom, but more na narrow enough and structured enough that it gives them focus. So we're gonna come up with a theme, whether it's like oceans or underwater, maybe it's the tropical rainforest, maybe it's space or animals, right? Because kids love both those things. Maybe you wanna incorporate fairy tales or maybe you wanna incorporate video games um, or character design. Whatever it is, you're going to think about a theme to kind of work around. For instance, I even do, um, like I have elements of art units in my Teachers Pay Teachers store. Um, I'll link to them in the description below, but they're all grade-based elements of art units. They teach the elements of art, but each grade has a different theme. So I might have, I think I have grade three is elements of art unit, but through the lens of insects. And grade two is through the lens of uh, farm. Um, then maybe for grade, uh, I think it's grade four or five, I have it as reptiles, so learning the elements of art and creating art projects through that are for the elements of art, each of the elements of art, but they're all themed through reptiles, for instance. Or I have uh, light versus dark, I think, for grade eight, and then I think it's weather for grade seven, something like that. Anyways, I'll link to those in the description below the video. I think just having theme-based art projects is going to be a great way just to engage your students to capture their intention or to um, and to just uh, really encourage them to kind of go deeper on a subject. You can do like a series of projects, right? So you can work through a theme over a few different projects or over like five different project art projects or artworks and or exercises and everything just to kind of really have them go deep in on it um, maybe through a variety of mediums and materials um, just to help better understand the theme and then just even scaffold their learning a little bit all right number two is to create community and connections within your classroom so the next step in teaching art to kids is to create community and connections I know it's hard when you don't have a lot of time especially if you have hundreds and hundreds of kids and tons of classes that you teach and just no time in between but I think it is important to us to through the year is to build those connections the way I like to do it is to do um, small group learning um, so I will have my bigger instruction and then during work time I might pull some kids up or go to a table and sit with some kids for here and there um, to do some more small group instruction to kind of work through some techniques um, and I also use that time to get to know kids individually and just building that connection and that relationship is going to help you uh, go a long way even with some of those students who maybe show unexpected behavior in your classroom um, because it's a lot easier that for them to or maybe they're, they're going to want to work with you more if they know you and they feel like you care about them. So just developing that relationship is really important. It's so as a proactive classroom management strategy. Um, so when people are asking, you know, I, I job interviews, like what is your classroom management strategy? Um, instead of being reactive all the time, like, oh, well, blah, 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 blah. If they do this, I'm, they're out of here. Um, well, that's just gonna break all connections with that student and really good luck getting it back. Um, but also, I think a better thing to say is, well, I prefer to do more proactive classroom management strategies. Um, one way I do that is I create connections. I focus some time on community building. I take the time to get to know each student individually. Um, I work on um, spending more one-on-one uh, -on -one time with students that are struggling or are not getting it. Um, so that way that instead of having 10 kids that really understand that 10% in my class who are feeling like they're successful, I have um, closer to 90 to 100% of kids feeling like they have a win in my classroom in some sort of way or are feeling something that is successful for them or are feeling growth. And not instead of focusing on the 10 kids that are artists. Um, I'm trying to make that 
my mission to support all my learners. Um, I think that will go a lot farther on a job interview than just being like, well, I have a reward system. I mean, you can have a reward system, that's good too. I also like reward systems, especially if they're like themed, um, but that's just not the only thing, the only strategy to do. So I really think that community, creating community and connections is the next step in how to teach art to kids because art is very vulnerable and to ask kids to be vulnerable and open up and explore those ideas, those deep ideas, you need to be willing, they need to be able to trust you and in order to trust you, they gotta get to know you and that is where creating community and connections comes in. All right, it's time for a question. So my wonder for you is what are some strategies that you like to use when it comes to uh, teaching art to kids? Let me know in the description below and that way we can have an ongoing list of uh, viewers from this channel also putting their input in as well and I think that is really important um, because then not only have do you have my ideas right you can take a look in the comment section below the video and surf through um, and read some other ideas as well from different experiences from people all over the world and then you can add your own ideas so that way people can learn from you as well and I will try to personally respond to all of the different comments so please Please, please, please put your input in the comment section below the video. All right, next step, number three is to scaffold learning. That means that you're going, instead of just straight going to an art project and be like, okay, we're doing printmaking, let's just dive in on this art project. Okay, we're gonna do acrylic painting, let's just start right from making a full canvas or whatever. Um, instead of that, we're going to, even for drawing, we're just gonna Draw, start off drawing a giant portrait of a celebrity. Even though you have very limited drawing skills, we're gonna go start, dive right in into grid drawing, large scale of a celebrity, uh, for example. Instead of just diving in right there, <laughs> we're going to scaffold learning. So that means that you're gonna teach the steps from start to finish of the different skills needed to be acquired in order for them to be successful in, for example, doing a large scale grid drawing of a celebrity. So that might look like uh, teaching uh, a lesson or providing a video about um, portraits um, and then having an exercise where the next one is just in having a fun day, experimenting, drawing the person across from them, taking turns drawing the friend across from them in different art mediums. And the next day they're just doing, uh, they're just focusing on drawing eyes and noses and ears. And then the next day they're doing, learning how to the, break down the face into different uh, features. And then the next day they're learning how to make a grid drawing because that takes a long time. So you might as well teach that for a whole class. And then you can do a day of value scales where they're learning how to create value. Um, and then you're ready to do a larger scale drawing of a celebrity in grid drawing, in value, monochromatic, in pencil. Um, but you have to teach, you can't go from, just expect them to be successful by just saying, okay, this is our project we're doing, and go. Um, it's not gonna look that great. Uh, you might see all those wonderful pictures of the, what art teachers have done on Facebook and Instagram, and you're like, wow, I want my kids to do it too. But what you're not seeing is that they have already taught all that scaffolding up until that point to produce that result. So it's really important that you scaffold your learning and teach the in-between parts, the starting parts, so that we have all the tools necessary, right? Because you're teaching those 1% incremental steps for them to get better, so that way they can build the confidence to learn skills and the techniques needed in order to do that end project that you want. That would be an end project and then they can take all that they've learned and show what they know in that art project but you gotta scaffold the pieces leading up to that moment all right the next step is to um incorporate technology into your learning uh you maybe uh have some different tablets um or if you have a handful of laptops or computers available to you you can get some wacom drawing tablets this one is a student level one that I use and it's great. Um, you can just unclip it, it could be Bluetooth. Um, you can do a plugged in version. I don't, I, I just plug it in every time because I'm just so lazy about connecting Bluetooth. <laughs> it's just my bad. And then it has a lovely stylus um, that's super sensitive to pressure um, and it works so well. I love this so much. Um, so I think that just even having like a station or like a center um, for learning um, technology or incorporating it into your classroom is a great step, especially because it's becoming so part of our lives in art too, right? It's becoming a huge thing 
online. So I highly recommend trying to teach that if you can get like a grant or if you can get some extra principal for funding. It's, hard, it's impossible to do it for the whole classroom, but even if you could have a handful and you could set up a table where like, you know, students that are fast finishers can go there or you can like rotate through tables doing different activities. Like these guys are working on sketchbooks. These guys are doing small group instruction. These guys are working on um, developing their, their painting card. These guys are doing the pre-process of pre-drawing it um, and painting on um, technology. Now there are lots of awesome programs. There are a lot of open source programs like community programs out there that don't actually require payment. Like Krita, for example, K-R-I-T-A is an amazing professional level program for drawing and painting um, on computers. It's what I use, um, but it's free to use because it's open source. Yeah, like how nice is that? It's so nice. Anyways, I really love Krita. Um, there's so many different there's Procreate, but that's like Apple, and I think that's expensive. But anyways, if you have access to Apple tablets and Procreate in your classroom, then like that's awesome. <laughs> um, and an option. Um, but if not, uh, I like this Wacom tablet. I think this is uh, a good way to um, get them started, especially if they were if you're in high school or whatever middle school, and they're looking to maybe get a career in like animation or something, or you want to help. Um, guide them towards different options for careers in art. Um, I'll have a link to this one. This is the Intuos, Intuos um, and this is the small size because it's more affordable and student friendly. <laughs> um, and this one's uh, available at a pretty affordable price to be honest and you can find the link to this in the description of this video. I'll link to it to Amazon. Um, it is an Amazon affiliate link um, so I do get a commission if you purchase it. However, I love this thing so much. I don't think, I mean, I wouldn't even be able to make Miser Casting resources without this. I draw all my own graphics and clip art for my resources. Um, there's no way I would, like, I, there's, there is no Miser Casting without this. <laughs> it's, I, I don't know what I would do without it. I would have a meltdown. I would have a meltdown. I, it's one of those things that, like, if, if something happened to it, I would need to replace it that second. It'd be on fast order because I need it in my life. Um, and I just love it so much. And I think these nibs, like, then it comes with different replacement nibs on the end. So, like, if this wears down, I believe in here, yeah, look at these replacements. Like, how long would this take me to go through it? The technology will change, probably. But anyways, <laughs> there's some extra... Ah, get back in there. Ready to go. Has a little handy sticker on. Plug it in, Bob's your uncle. And number five, if you're looking for a more in-depth approach to um, teaching art to kids, um, and even if you're, an art, if you're an art teacher especially, um, and you're wanting to learn more about lesson planning, productivity, time management, classroom management, um, systems for engagement and engagement strategies, uh, proactive approaches to teaching art um, and classroom management in an art classroom specifically, I highly recommend that you attend some Pro-D workshops um, and then get those pro hours and then learn through that. But if you're looking for a very art teacher specific one, I do have an online pro -D, um, course, workshop course. It's uh, a series of 10 lessons, um, plus I provide resources and workbooks to go with it. Um, it's called Art Teacher Academy. So my program called Art Teacher Academy is available on my own website. It's not on TPT, so if that's a problem in your district, it's hosted on my own platform. Um, and you can check it out at artasticcollective.com forward slash Art Teacher Academy or click the link below in the description of this video or you can scan the QR code on the screen right now and I will take you to Art Teacher Academy. Um, and there you can register for my um, pro -D course. It will give you pro -D hours. It's going to give you all the workbooks. Um, it's going to have videos that you can watch at your own pace on your own time. They're all pre-recorded for that. So that way, because I know you're busy and we're all in different time zones. It's literally <laughs> so hard to work with that, right? And plus, I understand the life of a teacher uh, having been one myself. Um, it's so busy, plus our family. So you can watch it at your own pace. Um, you can learn at your own pace. You can work through it as quickly or as slowly as you need to. Um, you can work over the summer if you want. Um, but our Teacher Academy is going to give you um, proactive um, 
classroom management strategy. It's going to help you with lesson planning through the year. It's going to give you the templates for lesson planning uh, through the year and for individual um, lessons. And it's going to give you some samples of lessons that you can download and use in your classroom as part of a bonus. It's going to give you um, uh, strategies for time management and productivity so you can figure out things better or it's going to give you uh, strategies for using materials in your classroom. I'm going to work through all of that with you so if you're new to teaching or if you just want to improve your skills um, and um, refine or get those 1% incremental steps to getting better as an art teacher. That is a very art teacher specific Pro D workshop. Again, I'll give you Pro D, day, Pro D hours at the end of the course and a certificate of completion if you need those as proof of your learning. Um, and then you can find more information scanning the QR code on the screen for our teacher academy or hit the link in the description below the video. And I'm so excited to see you in that course. It's really a great way to accelerate your growth as a teacher, especially if you're new to teaching, if you're a first year teacher, if you're looking to become an art teacher, or if you're an art teacher and you're looking just to get more uh, new strategies for being an art teacher. All right, my friend, that's it for this episode. The next episode to watch is how to help your child overcome the blank page. You can click the link above or in the description of the video. And then please like and subscribe to this channel to help me get to my next milestone, which is 10,000 subscribers. And I will see you in that episode.